This is the 2022 M2 MacBook Air, an all new processor, all new design, MagSafe, but sadly it's destined to go back to where it came from. Despite of all its advantages and innovations, there are two significant drawbacks that I personally cannot put up with. In this video, I will tell you why I decided to return this Mac. If you follow my channel, you probably know that I've used a variety of Macs. Here I have the 13-inch MacBook Pro, the 16-inch MacBook Pro, M1 Air, and yes, we even got the 2013 MacBook Pro for $300 and tried to make it work in 2022, but none of them has disappointed me as much as the new M2 MacBook Air. You might love Apple products, especially when it comes to their iMac, Mac Mini, M1, or M2 MacBooks for their lightness, portability, performance, and all that, but here's why I want to take my M2 Air back. First of all, and this is far from the main reason, is its complexion. And no, I'm not talking about the form factor of Apple's new laptop. The design is excellent here. Apple managed to increase the diagonal of the display, keeping the same dimensions, at the same time making it thinner, lighter, and more functional. But what Apple screwed up with is the finish. Guys, it's a freaking disaster. I'm extremely careful with my laptop, trust me. I don't eat next to it, I wipe the display gently, and when I connect USB devices, I try to do it carefully. It's funny, but by the end of the first day of use, the USB Type-C port already had a small scratch. I don't know what dye or spray method Apple paints their devices with, but after so many years, after the release of their first MacBooks in space gray colors, it looks like there hasn't been an improvement, but okay, space gray is one thing. Many people knew about this problem for a long time, but why was it necessary to launch Midnight, which has an even more apparent and vulnerable wear? I uh, have no clue. And I would be fine with the scratches because you don't even need to scratch it for it to look like it's been used for many years. A simple touch would suffice, although I guess this way Apple benefits from making laptops unsuitable for long-term use, capitalizing on their short-term flaws. Of course, it's more profitable to sell new laptops every year than to produce a device that lasts. However, this Max finish is barely an issue. There are more important things. No matter how Apple tries to convince us of the 18% higher M2 performance, it does not make a difference, at least when it comes to the base model, and that's the one I have. On the one hand, they have to impress their fans with their achievements for benchmarks, but on the other hand, with the release of M1 and then M1 Pro, M1 Max, Ultra, the bar was rate so high that now Apple has to compete with Apple. And as we can see, they're not too successful with that. The new processor, albeit more productive, obviously consumes more energy than its predecessor M1, as a result of which its heating becomes more of an issue than it was before. And you can, in theory, opt to manually attach a thermal pad inside to try to remove heat from the zone of the main processor, but I strongly recommend against that, because this way your laptop will break down faster. By the way, I will make a separate video about this, where I analyze recommendations from different tech YouTubers. And honestly, it's not entirely clear to me why you'd want to put the M2 processor into a laptop with the Air prefix, more productive, but also obviously hotter with a passive cooling system, which is clearly not enough here. And yet, I own a MacBook in the base model, which is even weaker than its counterpart on the M1. Sounds crazy, yes, but just think about it. It's enough to open one heavier app, and this Mac turns to swap. And if we talk about 250 gigabytes of SSD, then to my, and perhaps to your regret, one NAND chip is an absolute failure. And yes, it's not Apple's fault, but more so the supplier market, but nonetheless, the speed of the SSD is almost two times less, and alas, it's not enough for swap to work at the same quality as in the M1. A MacBook with a clocked RAM is much more obviously and blatantly slower than it was with the MacBook Air of the previous generation. And I just can't understand that. Apple, is that really you? And guys, please understand that the problem with the one NAND chip is not a joke. The issue is not so much with the speed of the SSD, but with the performance and smoothness of running your device. And here's how Apple commented on the new awesome 
cool and powerful SSD for The Verge. Thanks to the performance increases of M2, the new MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro are incredibly fast, even compared to Mac laptops with a powerful M1 chip. These new systems use a new higher density NAND that delivers 256GB storage using a single chip, while benchmarks of the 256GB SSD may show a difference compared to previous generation, the performance of these M2-based systems for real-world activities are even faster. Am I the only one who finds this comment funny? I mean, yes, there may be a difference in benchmarks, but in real life the performance has become even higher? Seriously, Apple? Here is a drive speed test for you. Here's a comparison in the speed of file transfers on different Macs. My 250GB M2 is also here. Where is the growth in real-life activities? Where is the incredible speed thanks to the new Dancer NAND? Yes, my new laptop would be happy to work without brakes, except its swap gets clogged to the point where the mouse lags. What are we talking about? Okay, to the hell with it. But where in the descriptions of your device is there at least one mention of the lower performance of the new generation of MacBooks with the M2 chip and the 250GB SSD? Why should I an inexperienced user fall for it. And don't get me wrong, I understand that 250 gigabytes is extremely small, I mentioned this myself many times in my videos, you need to take at least 512 and all that, but when it comes to SSD dependent performance and Apple doesn't disclose it, it's a little saddening. I don't know how realistic it is, but perhaps with the release of macOS Ventura this fall, the problems with swap and SSD will be fixed to some extent. Who knows? Maybe this is a software bug, which I personally find hard to believe. I invite all those who disagree to challenge my point of view in the comments. And once again, the M2 Air in the base model or in the more expensive configuration is an insanely beautiful and functional laptop. If you bought it, maybe you'll like it as they say from head to toe. It's certainly better to use software that requires a lot of RAM without the presence of the RAM itself, but we saw and experienced the potential of M1 when even on the MacBook Air it was possible to edit 4K video. And yes, now you can certainly do all this too, but the probability of freezing, glitching, crashing of programs due to running out of RAM is much higher. So why do I need the M2 MacBook Air when there is the M1 Air? In terms of design, I don't particularly want to buy it in 2022 because Apple buried the old design of the Air line with the release of the M2, but when it comes to its performance and the potential life cycle of a MacBook, there is no question. Especially Especially with such a significant price difference, $9.99 versus $11.99. But also keep in mind that prices may differ in different countries and by the way we managed to get the M2 in the base model in our region for just $1,600. But I gave me more heat dissipation due to worse performance, throttling, slow SSD and in general a whole set of things for which I wouldn't want to pay any more than $1,600. And paying additional $200 for an 18% increase in performance is a dumb idea, in my strictly personal opinion. Which is why my M2 is being sent back. And you can justify throttling and resetting processor frequencies in reviews in the same way as one of our viewers did under one of my videos. And by the way, watch the video if you haven't seen it yet. Indeed, running tests one by one which deliberately makes the computer work at full capacity without letting the MacBook rest is not the most scientific approach, but actually we did carry out the test with a break so that the Mac could cool down. If that doesn't convince you, let's do a live test right now rendering the same video in Premiere Pro in 4K on the M1 Air and the M2 Air at the same time. Both MacBooks started off equally fast. After all, the power of both the M2 and the M1 is equally impressive. But what is the difference? The rendering speed of the two MacBooks is about the same. Yes, the M2 was literally 5 minutes ahead, but is that a significant increase? In my opinion, no. The only surprising thing is that despite the higher video rendering speed of the M2, the frame rate was higher on the M1. But after about 15 minutes of time, the M2 began to heat up even more, which of course led to throttle. But it turns out that Apple didn't lie to us. This is not a typical benchmark where absolute power of the whole computer is used. It's quite an ordinary task where M2 is indeed a bit 
faster, but in critical tasks, M2 throttles more. A more efficient processor produces higher temperatures, and high temperatures, as we know, the processor has to dampen in one way or another so as not to overheat. An even 5 minute difference is a good indicator, but how critical is it? I don't know about you, but after a long video, I myself don't mind to rest and put my computer aside. And if the difference is not so impressive, why should I personally need M2 if M1 still shows amazing results? And yes, there is a 99% chance that you won't be rendering a 4K video on the M2. We just wanted to show you some close to real life tasks to give you an idea of the difference between the old and new generation Apple's processors. Of course, we could use different benchmarks, but they don't show the real situation in daily tasks, because not every software can load all the cores of the processor and the whole hardware. But exactly, I don't see the point of keeping M2 because of very insignificant performance difference, and whether you need it, it is for you to decide. Course. But also keep in mind that in this video I'm talking about the base model of the new MacBook Air. Naturally, in more advanced models, both in terms of unified memory and in terms of SSD, performance will be better. Just like a month ago, I still do not recommend getting the M2 MacBook with A to 50 GB SSD and B 8 GB unified memory. And if you still don't understand my reasoning, then watch this video again. In the meantime, I'll probably return this MacBook to where it came from and smash the like button if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click on this video and this one and see you in the next one.